The Montego just got its first significant dashboard look. Let's check it out. Let's do some testing and see what's going on. First, let's check for voltage at the battery while the engine's running, so the alternator should be spinning. It's jumping from 11.5 to 11.9 volts. Definitely not good. All right, now let's check the battery with the car off. We're actually getting more power right now. 12.0, 12.1. And recovering, it's going up. All right, so it looks like the battery isn't getting any power from the alternator. Let's make some obvious checks first. Make sure these cables are on tight. They are. Check any ground connections. I'm gonna take this bolt off and see if there's any corrosion buildup in there. I doubt it, it looks like it's just rusty. Make sure you still have a belt. Looks like we do. It's a little hard to see in there, but it's in there. There's another one of our ground straps to check. Again, it looks like it's just rusty, but I'll clean these both up. I'm disconnecting the battery first. Definitely rusty. Probably not our problem though. Looks better, but we're probably putting a band-aid on a heart condition at this point. So let's move on to something a little more useful. All right, I've cleaned off the battery terminals and I'm gonna put this battery on a charger. All right, it's charging. So I'll wait for that battery to charge up. Hopefully we'll see much better results with a fully charged battery at 12.6 volts. All right, it was left on the charger overnight. It looks good. Let's disconnect this, reconnect these clamps and see if it's happy when it starts up. I was looking at the wiring diagram for this and there's two fusible links and a fuse in the fuse box. So I'm gonna check those before I dig in too deep. That fuse is good. We are getting power through the fuse. Those may be fusible links down there, but they don't appear to be the alternator ones because they are showing in the diagram as being on the positive side. Because of how far away the alternator is from the battery, I made this very long cable I can connect to the negative post and plug in right here. That way I can know for sure I'm getting a reading from the negative post of the battery instead of a bad ground or something like that. Before we go trusting this newly made wire, let's test out the battery voltage as it stands now. 12.42 volts, 12.42. Now I can take this over to the alternator and test it at the pin. I can't see anything up underneath here, so I'm gonna use my phone and this mini camera to peek up there and see where that pin is. There's the alternator plug. All right, this is hooked up to the positive post on the alternator. Now we can reconnect everything and run this test. All right, there wasn't a check engine light, but I plugged in my scanner anyway and I found this. Generator field F terminal circuit malfunction, and that's just because the battery's been disconnected. So after running all the tests that I could run, I finally gave in and took the alternator out. I took the alternator to a local parts store. They can usually test the alternator independent of the car on a bench for free, and it'll tell you for sure if there's anything wrong with the alternator itself or if it's something else. I'm actually in the middle of taking this alternator apart and seeing how it failed. So if you're interested in that or what's inside an alternator in general, stick around, I'll have a video soon. Even if you did all the tests that I did, it's still important to take your alternator somewhere to get it tested because you can find out if the alternator itself is bad or the control for the alternator went bad. In my case, the control module for the car could have been at fault because it controls the field circuit for that alternator. And if you don't like the price of your alternator, you're really not gonna like the price of your computer. So if you don't run these tests and figure it out, you may just end up paying for both. Hopefully, if I convey anything to you at all in this video, it's just test your components. Even if the components involved are cheap and you have to buy the tools, you'll save a little bit of money and you'll have a multimeter in the end of it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next Car Simplified video.